Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be looking at ZFS. And the reason why I want to look at ZFS is we're about a week or two out from when Ubuntu releases uh, 19.10, and that will have an experimental mode for hosting uh, your file systems under ZFS. So I thought it'd probably be a good idea to kind of go through some of the things that uh, ZFS uh, provides and then talk about how to do some of the things in ZFS. So we'll do that right after this. I have a, uh, I have our friend uh, LDAP client back up and we're going to, we're going to create a, a a ZFS pool on this on this virtual box image, and and then we're going to play around with it a little bit, and we're going to uh, modify modify it, um, and then we'll 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 show I'll show you some of the commands that you can use to do this. Now, I am certainly not a ZFS expert. I have not worked with it for centuries. <laughs> Sorry about that. I haven't worked with it for a long time. Uh, I I did manage a, a system that was already set up that had ZFS on it. Uh, it was quite large, and uh, they had done that about 20 years ago. And so it had been in production, I think, about three or four years before I joined the team. And so, uh, yeah, I'd been around, I'd been exposed to it, knew kind of what it did. Um, but it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I actually stuck both feet in it and converted over one of my file systems to ZFS here. <laughs> So with that, let's let's find out what we need to do to get this beastie installed. Now under Linux, there are two flavors of ZFS. There is a package that's provided by OpenZFS, and actually both of these are under the OpenZFS, so it's going to be a little confusing. But um, the OpenZFS package that's included with Ubuntu that I'm running here, 18.04, is ZOL which has the native kernel support for ZFS. There is another version of this, which of ZFS, which has to use Fuse. So be careful of which one you're using. Uh, Fuse is okay, but Fuse doesn't have the performance of a native, a native support in the kernel. So to install this, I'm going to put up uh, ZFS utils Linux. Now, that's what I believe is happening here. I've checked. There is a module for ZFS that's installed, and I don't see Fuse. So I'm assuming that this is the correct one that does not use Fuse. I run ZFS on BSD. So uh, I'm learning uh, ZOL on Linux uh, with you <laughs> today. So I already have this in package installed. This will take a few minutes when you do it. There, there isn't, that, isn't that much there, but you do get a couple of things that you'll, you'll need. First of all, you'll probably want to be under root when you're running these, these uh, ZFS commands. So two things you need to know. First, ZFS works with something called a pool and something called a data set. So a pool is a collection of disk drives. So that is the, the equivalent, I guess, in, in Linux of a volume. So that would be, you know, your, your, if you had one drive, then uh, you would have a, a, a single pool with a single drive in it. Uh, however, ZFS kind of wanted to get away from that management of uh, back in the, in the day, it was one volume, one drive, and that's the way everything was associated. Now, today, though, you can have, you know, RAIDs and you can have all those things, but RAID and, and all of those uh, hardware-based solutions just didn't get it right. Um, they didn't think about things like uh, being able to manage the uh, system at a file level because RAIDs and all those other hardware solutions manage blocks. And that makes it really time consuming to recover. It makes it harder for those, those systems to determine if there's data in those blocks. So a lot of times they just make the assumption that, that they copy every block. So that's why it takes a lot longer for a RAID to recover uh, versus uh, ZFS, because ZFS knows what's been written to the disk. It knows which blocks have been written and been, or been changed. So uh, that's one of the major advantages of the pool. Now, data sets. Uh, data sets is kind of a logical boundary. You can think of those kind of as directories or mount points. Um, they, they allow you to create, uh, I want to set up a specific type of share. Maybe I want to share this out with 
Uh, I don't know, maybe I want to put it, create an NFS share or a Samba share. Uh, or maybe I want to create one that's read-only and hosts just applications. I might have a database installed under here. I might have some data files that I'm using or a big data solution that I want to be able to uh, keep the data for. Or I might need permissions uh, separated between different uh, data sets. So maybe one needs to be set uh, for a particular accounting group. Maybe another one needs to be set for engineering. It, you get the idea. So it gives you that flexibility to manage the pools. Uh, instead of at a granular level, it allows you to, to d divide up the pool any way that you want. And to set, so, if you will, of like data. So um, I guess the main thing is, is that ZFS has a map of all the blocks on the drive, and that's an important takeaway. Um, let's go ahead and. Uh, and let's create a pool so you can kind of see how that works. So what I'm going to do here is the command that I'm going to use is zpool. And, and the uh, actual uh, option is to create and then the name of the pool and the type. Now, if I left this blank, it would make a, a stripe pool out of this, so, which would be the equivalent to a RAID 0. A mirror is equivalent to a RAID 1. Now, I say equivalent is not exactly... <laughs> Uh, because remember, uh, I'm not managing blocks. I'm managing I'm managing the the, the uh, actual things that I've, I've written to the disk. So I've got two devices here: SDDB, SDB, and SDC. So we'll go ahead and do that. It'll take a couple of seconds, a few seconds, and then I can run a status command, and I can put a V behind it. And that just gives me a little bit more information, not a whole lot. But you'll see that uh, uh, coming down here, I have a pool called ZFS pool, which is the one I wanted. The state is online. There isn't any, uh, there would be messages here, the type of scan, whether it be a scrub or whether it's found errors, that kind of information would be here. But you know, this is too new. It hasn't, hasn't collected anything yet. Uh, and then this would be the, you'll see it kind of go down in a tree form here. So the Z pool is the pool name. And then I have a type, which is mirror zero, which is those two drives. And then the two drives and they're all online. Uh, I can also do a ZFS list. And ZFS is the other command. This is looking at the data set. So uh, in this case, I have 9.63 gig available, 81K Use. Now, that 81K is what ZFS wrote. It writes a little bit at the front of the pool and a little bit at the top of the pool in order to, to manage, basically do the management of the entire space. Now, one of the other things that you will find in ZFS, I don't have to mount it. I don't have to go create a mount entry for this in the uh, FS tab table. I don't have to specify what options I want. Now, there's ways to set options. It does bear with me, but there are ways to set options, but I don't do it through uh, uh, FS tab. This is not managed through Unix, uh, through Linux at all. So let's say we want to, let's say that we think uh, we're going to need to expand that amount of uh, disk. Maybe we need more, and so we need to expand that. To do that, grabbing hold of my command here that I did earlier. All right, so you would do a zpool add, uh, and then again, you would tell it that you're, you, want, you want this to be added to the ZFS pool. The, the type is a mirror, and then I have two new drives, SDD and SDE, and I'm going to add to it. And this, again, will take a couple seconds to run. And you'll notice that if I do the list, it shows that I have I now have 19.36 gigs. So it did expand the pool size. It does show 20 gig out here in the as far as Linux is concerned. And then we'll do a status again, and you'll notice that uh, it has two drives under this mirror and two drives under that mirror, and that's just the way you manage it. I can't add drives to mirror zero, and I now can't add drives to mirror one, but I can still add drives to the pool. Um, so the next thing we'll want to do here is let's create a couple of data sets under the pool. I mean, actually, a couple of other data sets under the pool. 
So I'll create uh, data. And if I do a ZFS list, it'll show me I now have this, uh, this pool called data. It has 24K used and uh, it has 19.36. Now I wonder, 82.5, that has gone up a little bit. So as I'm adding this, there is some management that's being written to the disk. Uh, I also want, I also want apps. And one of the other things I can do is you can, you can, you can put your, you can put additional uh, data sets treed underneath ones that already are there. So I'm going to add DJ where under data. And there we are. I have uh, Zpool, apps, data, and DJ where. Now, DJ where I want to add to the owner. And um, ZFS does have a POSIX layer, so that's why these commands work. I'm just making sure I can write to it. Uh, they will inherit from the, in this case, they inherit from the data set above. So DJ Ware inherited its POSIX uh, ACLs from data, which inherited its POSIX from DFS pool. So it's, a, it's the way it works. So let's go check and see if. Yeah. Uh, oops. I didn't want to do that. There. Yes, I own the directory. So that's very good. So I'm going to uh, drop out of this for a minute. I have. I've created a, uh, a, a little bash script here that will just create some dummy data. I, I kind of wish this had M files. Uh, M files allows you to create a, a file of any size, but we don't. So, all right. So now we've created some data. Uh, let me go back into root again, because I've got more commands I want to run. <laughs> so. Now you'll see that it has some additional data. Now each of those each of those files was three meg and there are forums. That means I had a total of twelve. So I've got some data in here I can play around. Even though it's fake, it's fun data, right? Fake and fun. Um, now I can keep adding on to my pool sides as much as I want. Let me make sure. I had B e and C, D and E, and that should be F and G. Okay. So this, again, will take a couple of seconds. Run. And you'll notice that we now have three mirrors. And you'll also notice that our available went up to 28.96 gig. And that shares across all of them. Um, let's, uh, let's. Okay, now that we got this where we wanted it, let's wipe it out. Uh, because what I want to do is show you uh, a different way of doing things. So let's do to, to now. If if I do a Z pool destroy from the pool name. This is the same as doing an RM minus RF. <laughs> this is blowing everything away. This is going to blow away all of this right here. All of that's gone. History. If there are any snapshots, those are gone. If there are any exports, those are gone. So there's no way to recover this without a backup. So this is gone for good. Just to prove it, no pools. Uh, ZFS list, no data sets. But everything is gone. Uh, if, if I look at my mount points, they're gone. Everything is gone. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a RAID set. And 
Raid, uh, the Raid sets, there are three of them. There are, there's Raid Z, which is equivalent to, <laughs> roughly equivalent to Raid 5. Uh, Raid Z, uh, Raid 1Z is equivalent to Raid 6. And Raid uh, 3Z has no equivalent in Raid. That has for, that allows for three parity drives. In other words, Raid 1, I can survive a single drive crash. Uh, uh, excuse me, RAID Z, I can, I can uh, survive a single drive crash. RAID 2Z, I can survive a, uh, a two drive crash. And then RAID 3Z, I can survive a three, raid, a three drive crash. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this. This will take a little bit longer because uh, there's a lot more information it has to write. But you'll notice I now have a RAID Z1. Even though I didn't say Z1, I just said Z. I still have a RAID Z1. So I want to also, let's go over here. I want to do E, F, and G. I'm going to add that. So I, I need to go back here and say add so they're create. Because it's good. if I said create, I'll just say, uh, hey, you already got one. But this should add it on. This will take a little bit too do and then you'll notice I, I actually have that set up now so let's do a list and let's see how much I have 38.46 gig now uh, from these six drives that are mounted now these are all 10 gig drives so that that's out of a total of 60 gig uh, so yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna chew up quite a bit of room for for management of the drive, and that's because we have these two. Now I could have done this easier. I could have, when I created this, I could have put all all six drives in here, and probably made this array two Z. But so I heard I heard, there was, I heard another rule on the internet that said don't go over nine to twelve uh, virtual drives. Uh, that is total nonsense. We had over hundred and sixty drives in our ZFS pools. I mean that is just total nonsense. The thing that matters is the requirement for the the transfer rates. Uh, we had requirements that required us to have 160 drives in order to meet the the transfer rates that were required by our customer. So um, I, I don't pay any attention to that stuff. That's ridiculous. Uh, as you add drives, you add about 100 megabits a second uh, to the uh, to the the speed of the drive. So two drives would deliver 200, three, three. And this is approximate. Uh, but as you add up the number of drives, you, you increase the speed of the, trans, of the bandwidth or you increase the bandwidth. So that being said, let's find out what happens if I lose something because that's going to, that is definitely going to happen. Oh, one other thing. I need to create my, uh, I need to recreate my data sets again, don't I? Because I destroyed them. Let me do that. And this will take, again, a couple of seconds to do each one of these. <clears throat> all right, so you'll notice I'm all back the way I was, and my, and my pool is shared between all of those. Um, I also need to go rerun the script again. Oh, wait, before I do that. <laughs> this time I cheated, though, and I'll have to fix that, too, in my script. Okay. <laughs> oh, oops. I don't know why I didn't see that. 
All right, we'll clean this up better. Yeah, I had the global command was in the middle of it. All right, so now I've got my data back and I can do a check on it. And list it and I can see that uh, 12 meg is in use. So uh, let's look at our, let's, let's go back into this again. Now let's, the, and let's talk about some real world examples here. Let's say that I start seeing a bunch of checksums on this particular drive right here, SDC. Let's say I start seeing a whole bunch of checksums on here and I'm getting worried about that drive is maybe fixing, as we say in Texas, to uh, fail. So uh, what I'm gonna wanna do with that drive is I'm gonna wanna replace it. So to do that, I can do a Z pool replace ZFS pool and then I put in the device SDC and let's say that I want to replace it with I have a let's say I have a, some hot spares that are hanging around I don't like using hot spares I prefer to have them mounted but uh, that is the next one in the chain so let's go ahead and replace that and wait oh Z spool no Z spool there we go. <clears throat> and you're going to notice a couple of things here. First of all, it did replace the HDC with HDH, and it resilvered that drive. Um, uh, resilvering is is basically the equivalent to a RAID rebuild. I, I stuck a drive in and I rebuilt. Now that's this is done. If I, if I had done this on a RAID 3, we'd be sitting here a while waiting for it to complete. Now the difference between ZFS and RAID is it's only going to mess about with the data that's been written to the drive. It knows what's out there. It's not going to do what RAID does. RAID does block by block copy whether there's data on that set, that particular block or not. Uh, whereas that ZFS much smarter <laughs> just copies what it needs to and it's done. So, uh, so it is all up, it's all online, it's all good. What about the case though, if I have a failure? I mean, if, they, if I, if for some reason I fell asleep and the drive failed. Well, in that case, what I would have to do, let's, let's put that back. Let's put this back. And again, it's gonna resilver the uh, drive again. So you'll notice that it just it just did that. Um, so what if I uh, what if I have an actual failure? Let's simulate one. I'm going to do it offline on Z tool, uh, and we'll we'll pick on our friend SDC again. And immediately that particular raid went into degraded mode. Now you notice this one down here is fine. But this one up here is degraded and it shows that the SDC is offline. Uh, you would probably actually see this uh, <laughs> being more than just being taken offline by the administrator. You'd probably see this as a fault or, a, you know, some other error condition with the drive. But at this point, I can go get my new drive and then I can just online it. <laughs> And again, it's, it's back up, everybody's happy. Um, and we're good to go there. So, um, okay, what about... Now you'll notice that down here when I'm looking at these, all this drive stuff, this, I have access to all 38.4 gig. I have access, I can, I can fill that up all by myself if I wanted. Uh, so let's say that I'm not going to be allowed to do that. So I can set a quota, uh, and that's a, a, of 100 meg on, that's not going to work, because there we go. Uh, and so I can set a quota on that.
and I don't see where it's showing me the quota. I know there is a way to do that. Do a CFS get. Okay. It should be in here under, there it is, quota 100 meg. So you can see that I have changed this and now my quota is limited to 100 meg. Um, I can, I could change that. Do that, let's change that to 200 meg. So this is dynamic. There's nothing that, um, there is nothing physically that's happening here. I mean, it's all it's doing is it's just saying that I can put up to 200 meg in that drive, and that's it. Uh, and once I'm I'm done with that, I'm done with it. So if I go to, if I look at, yeah, it says that there's 200 meg available on that drive, 13 meg are in use, and 188 are left. So once I filled it. As far as unit Linux is concerned, that drive is full. So you can also do something else too. Let's say that I only want to reserve a hundred meg. I don't know. <laughs> this would probably not be realistic, but let's say that I want to uh, reserve a hundred meg of apps <laughs> ZFS pool. That wouldn't take long to fill up, would it? Uh, ZFS set, and I want to do reservation equal a hundred meg on ZFS pool slash apps. Now, what it's going to do is it's actually going to take that that amount of data and 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 pull it out of the available pool. And I think the only way I can see that is to look here. Yeah, it's it's pulled it away from the available pool and and it's reserved 100 meg. So it, this is not a cap. This is just saying reserve 100 meg and, and don't let anybody else use that up. So at least I'll have 100 meg worth of applications, which I'm it won't be very many, but I'll have at least that much I can store out there before somebody else builds the file system. That's basically what it's doing. So, CFS get all will list all of the uh, all of the settings in in uh, ZFS pool, and I, I can and then I can look at uh, data. I can look at apps. All of these have their own have their own settings, so you can you can just go in here and look at that. So, what else do we want to do here? Oh, the other thing to tell you about. So, let's get down here for a minute. <clears throat> so, in the in the Linux world, if you wanted to, to do a file level check on the system, you would have to offline the drive. And then do an FS check or an FSDB on it in order to see what was wrong with the system. In 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 uh, ZFS, you don't have to do that. The there is a thing called a uh, scrub, and scrub occurs automatically every time you do a read. So it's actually checking to make sure that there is no checksums or problems with the data that's stored on the drive. You can also manually initiate a scrub. Let's say that you have an archive drive that you just mostly write to and you don't read to it very often. You could initiate a scrub on whatever timetable you want to do it. Once a day, once a week, once a month, whatever you feel is, is needed. And then you can adjust it depending upon what you want to do there. So let's run one. And this will take a little bit to spool up, but it won't take very long to run with this size of a system. So you'll notice that the scan says it repaired nothing because nothing was was is it has a problem, and it ran that uh, right away and it's done. So uh, that's the equivalent of doing an FS check, sorta, kinda, <laughs> so before I get jumped on by the most experienced people. Uh, next, there are. Um, there is the uh, there is the ARC and and the ARC is the advanced uh, replica. Excuse me. The 
advanced replication cache. So the ARC is, is what people always say it runs out of memory. So let me just show you something. I have all this running. How much memory am I actually chewing up? 195 meg out of two, out of two gig. So it isn't, you know, it's, it's not gonna, it's, yes, it, it can tear into your memory. And I've heard this one said too, you need at least one gigabyte of memory for every terabyte of disk. That is bull crap. Um, you can manage, I mean, if <laughs> we, had, we had close to almost a petabyte of disk, there is no way we could put that much memory in the servers. <laughs> so you can manage your, your cache sizes, and that is what the, uh, all of, uh, if, I bring, if I bring up this again, that's what this is all about. You'll, there are a couple of properties here, the primary cache, which is currently set to all, and the secondary cache. You can manage those. So you can uh, you can kind of go through the performance curves and look and see how your system is doing, and you can manage it. So don't don't listen to this this garbage. I mean, I know it's rules of thumb, but why don't you take the time to actually see what your system needs to use? Uh, also, you can uh, you can create drives to take the load off the memory. And so let's 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 look at two of them. The first one I want to look at is Zill. And I'm going to create a mirror. Now you should, your log files, you should, I would generally recommend that you create them in a mirror. And, and that's just because if you do lose a drive, at least the system can keep limping along. Uh, if you do only have one drive in the, in the log and you do lose that drive, well, Sorry, but your system is probably not going to be running. <clears throat> so this will take a few seconds. And then you'll notice I now have a mirror with my log in it. So let's do the cache next. This is the, so this is the Zill, and this will be the ARC. And in this instance, instead of doing logs, I say cache. And then generally, these are going to be uh, high-speed drives. They're going to be probably something like an SSD. Uh, how big those need to be? Here's here's what I would do. I would watch and kind of see how, how your system performs. So you might want to run this in test for a while, kind of throw some simulated data at it, see how your system is running, and then size your logs and your cache file sizes accordingly. Uh, I mean, the, you don't want to go out and just buy a whole bunch of SSDs or NVMe drives just for the fun of it, but try to size it according to what your needs are. So, uh, so these would generally, and that would be true of the log as well, those would generally be SSD drives, and so would these. Uh, in fact, these are, I think, one gig uh, files. These aren't, these are not the 10 gig files, and you'll see that once we uh, do the list up. So we're just waiting for the cache to get built. And I did put those in a, and I did put those in a mirror as well. Uh, it, for the cache file, you don't have to because it would, if it fails, it's going to go back and use memory. Uh, so, I mean, that's up to you whether you want to do that or not. Um, at least that's been my experience, is if that you lose that drive, it just goes back. Um, let's see. Snapshots. Okay, so let's go back and list. Let's say that uh, I want to do a snapshot on apps. So let's do that. So let's do it. A snapshot is basically... Uh, it's moving the bar. So it's, it's saying, I want to I want to create a preserved uh, location, a, a reserved marker in time that says, I want to save the file state just like it is right now. So any changes in the future, I have a way I can roll back to the point where I'm where I am right now when I did the snapshot. And you would put in the name of the data set and then uh, you can give it, well, let's say, Let's do that. We'll give it a name here. And so now it's created a snapshot. Let's go into the, 
Now you don't actually see anything in here. Uh, let's create a file, app1. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that would be an interesting program to run. <laughs> And now it's 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 going across. This is uh, synchronous, so it's got to wait for the complete on all the drives before it says good. Uh, you can adjust that. Um, I guess kind of a rule of thumb, and, I, and I'm not going to say rule of thumbs, but I will say that vir that if you have virtual machines out there, you probably want synchronous on, uh, just because the way they are they write to the directory, they they kind of want to make sure that sometimes they'll come back around and check. Make sure that the I.O. completed. So it's better not to do things asynchronously with them because they had a tendency to panic when they don't find that the data they think they wrote actually got written. So, uh, so there's a there's a hidden directory here, isn't there? You probably don't know that. Not ZFS. And it, actually, it's not hidden, and I'll show you why in a minute. But there is my snapshot. And there's nothing in the directory. Now, I didn't, this, this I'm not used to. Um, on, on Linux, it sticks the, the snapshots out as part of the data sets. That does not happen on BSD. I've never seen that on BSD. <laughs> but on Linux, that's what it does. And I guess that's okay. At least you kind of know what's going on. Um, now, you know I put a file in there after the snapshot, so if I recover, if I want to roll back, I get my command back. And that's the name of the command, is roll back. What it should do is it should back the bar up, and so that file will be gone. Yeah, it's gone. So, and that's what snapshots do for you, is it allows you to create marks in time. You can have as many snapshots as you have space for. They will take a little bit of uh, space up. Um, not, I mean, not a typically a whole lot, because it's really keeping pointers. It's not the copy of the file itself. Uh, if you want to see what, other than... <laughs> Looking at your other, you can look at. There's another way to see your your snapshots, which is to do this, and then it'll show you the snapshots. Other than uh, Linux has kind of given us a space saver here; <laughs> it's shown us exactly where the file is. So uh, I, I've never seen that before. That's interesting. That's the first time I've seen that one. So last thing to show you is this. So if I want to. Let's say that I want, to, I want to move this over to another machine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you can't be in it. <laughs> um, in order to do a ZFS pool, you need to be out of it. Also, you need to make sure that the, if you have any clients that are shared uh, on it, like as NFS or a, a Samba uh, client that's using it, they have to be dismounted before you can do this. Because uh, what happens here is this. Oh my God, it's gone. No, it's not. So um, that allows me to move it. Now, when you're doing an export, I would recommend that you use the command option to give it a directory path so you can find it. Uh, because depending upon what particular version of this you're running, whether it be SD or whether it be on a, on a Mac, and by the way, Mac does run CFS just fine, um, or whether it be on Linux, uh, then uh, yeah, you probably want to do that. So I'll do an import. <laughs> And it's all back. Whew. And just to make sure that it is, did it recover my 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 very valuable data? <laughs> well, if I can type here, I'll do that. We'll do a shortcut. Ah, there's my very valuable data. It's all back, all full of zeros. 
<laughs> Yay. All right. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this today. Um, and uh, if there's something specific that you would like to see, there are other commands. Uh, Here's a, here's a resource that I would suggest. I don't really like to add this resource, but the OpenCFS um, pages are very good. I mean, if you go there, there's some very good documentation on it. Uh, the other place you can go is Oracle, believe it or not, uh, and uh, they have a number of documents on sysadmins uh, or ZFS. You will find that there are some commands that won't work on Linux simply because they haven't been implemented yet, but give them time, they're working on it. Um, I've seen a lot of progress in the last couple of years with them catching up with uh, the BSD versions of, of, uh, of uh, ZFS, and that's very good. There are still some things that need to be done, but Linux is becoming more complete, and uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's not bad, not bad. So I hope to see you again real soon, and as always, please like and subscribe, and if, there, if, if you want to add on to anything that I've said, please do so in the comments below. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you.